Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be looking at the 300mm f2.8. This is my current go-to lens to do pretty much anything. Zoo photography, wildlife, sporting events, everything apart from weddings. This is what I will go to and what I will use nowadays. It's a Mark 1 version, so it's not the latest version at all, but it is the IS version, so it's not the basic non-IS version, which is, if you're looking for a cheap-ish prime 300mm fast lens, try and go the extra to the IS version over this. It's um, definitely quality-wise worth going the extra bit, especially if you're using it with mirrorless stuff as well. This pairs perfectly with my R7. I've had no issues with focusing at all, um, so it can be used on newer and older cameras. Um, I've been using it and testing it with my 1DX, which will go through some of the photos um, that I took with that and go through some of the footage and everything that I've taken with this lens. But first of all, let's go through the lens and um, go through everything that's on the lens itself. So starting in the front, you've got a removable um, lens hood. This is removed by a bottom screw and that can be taken off to reveal the gigantic um, front element on there, which is what lets in so much light and allows you to have the F2.8 on there as the lowest aperture. You've got your, on the side buttons, you've got your focusing distance mode. So you've got 2.5 to unlimited. You've got 2.5 to 6.4, and then you've got 6.4 to unlimited. I tend to stick it on 2.5 and unlimited and leave it because the photography I do with Z's and stuff, you don't know if something's gonna be coming really close to you unless you know 100% that thing's going to be 6.4 meters away there's no real need to sort of move from there. Down from there you've got your autofocus and manual focus selector. Um, obviously most of the time we keep that on AF. I have used um, MF a couple of times but very rarely. You've got your stabilization on and off. I would recommend keeping that on unless you're doing something like uh, photos of the moon potentially or any star photos. That's the only time you'd ever really want to take that off. You've got your two stabilization modes, mode one and two. One is for panning and one is for up and down motions. I tend to stick it on one because that's the panning mode and that's with most animals will be panning across the uh, screen there. And you've got your focus preset with your set button. I keep that usually in the middle. I don't tend to use the focus preset that much. You also have your, towards the front, you've got a few buttons you can set to um, customize settings. You've also got a ring dial as well that allows you to customize that if you wanted to. I've never used that personally. On top, you've got your um, focusing, focusing distance currently on the on there, so that will change obviously as you take photos. It'll move further or closer. You've got a nice plaque on there, so you can tell it's a nice L lens. You've got a nice pla metal plaque on there telling you what lens it is. Um, you've got your collar. The only difference between this one is quite small on the Mark 1, it's a little bit bigger on the Mark 2, so you can fit bigger um, foot points on there. But because this being a relatively light lens, and I use this on a sling, so I don't really need a bigger foot on it. I literally have it slung on my um, on my sling itself and walk around with that without a problem at all. And then at the back, you've got your removable drop-in filter. Um, I just have a clear one in there for now, but if you're in a bright sunny days, motorsport, that sort of thing, you might want to and put sort of like a, a um, variable aperture sort of one in the back there for that. But that's the overall sort of look around of this lens. So it's fairly lightweight, it's nice in the hands, no problems at all for me personally just to have this handheld and to, to sling it to my size and walk around a zoo or something. But let's go through now some of the images I took with this and then we'll uh, go from there. So the first photo we're going to look at is a photo of a giant Asian pond turtle. This is um, taken with 1DX as I've said, 300mm, this is at f2.8 and uh, as you can see I'm pretty much in line with the water so we've got this perfect reflection going on here. Super sharp, my focus point was on the eye and just a perfectly super sharp photo and considering these, this kit is fairly old at this standard. Um, from now is is a pretty decent photo there, I think, personally. Okay, the next one we look at is we're going to look at a couple of photos of hyenas here. Um, so this is a hyena running towards me, again f2.8. Um, you can see it's pretty much off, completely off the ground here. Background's a little bit crap, but it's completely um, blown out because I'm shooting at f2.8. And what I'm going to do is show you the video footage I took 
while taking this photo so you can see from the next photo how well it kept in focus. So as you can see this hyena is running pretty quickly, it's moving across um, the enclosure chasing a pheasant and the one of the mid photos I took which is this one here still f2.8 perfectly in focus super sharp on the eyes background totally blown out and um, really good to keep pretty much every photo that i took in that whole sequence that you heard just then was in focus which is absolutely great the final image we can look at here is of a male ostrich and his head again focused on the eye f2.8 background completely obliterated because of what's behind it. There's pretty much just open fake savannah at the zoo. The eye is completely focused. You can see the reflection in the eye and everything is just absolutely spot on how you'd expect it to be from such a high quality lens. So as you can see, really good quality photos you can sort of pull out from this lens, no worries at all. So that's been the video today on the 300 mil. Hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe, comment and like as you guys have already been doing. Let me know what you guys want to see next. I potentially could do a review on the 500mm that I've got as well in a similar sort of fashion. Or do you want to see a review on the R7? Now I've gone way over 20,000 shutters on it since new. I could potentially do a review on that. Or there's other things as well. Just throw in some um, comments and, and let me know what you guys want to see. So thanks for watching as always. Please subscribe and I'll catch you again later on. Cheers.